Hello, I'm Kristen L, or just Kristen. Welcome to my channel. I talk about science fiction and fantasy books and the awards that go with them. This is my next journal for the month of June. I'm going to be talking about what I read this week, and this is my first journal, I think, where I have to say the grand total number of books that I finished this week was zero. I finished zero books this week. <laughs> I did read a lot. Um, I have a lot of books I can talk about, but I finished zero of them, so let's go ahead and talk about that. I will also, okay, honestly, this was just, this is not a good journal week for me because I also didn't manage to finish the novelette that I'm reading for my novelette challenge this week, which was When You Linger by Bonnie Jo Stufflebeam. Um, however, we'll talk about how far I did get and yeah, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. I also want to let you guys know that I will be starting a series um, ranking every category of Hugo nominations for the Hugo Awards this year. So I will probably be starting with novella or novelette, um, and then like as I read or otherwise consume everything in the different categories, I will be uploading videos with kind of ranking them. Also, I'm hoping that my husband Adrian will guest star with me for some of these videos because, um, for instance, the dramatic categories, um, which are mostly like TV and movies, those are things that we almost always watch together. And he is also much more of a graphic novel um, connoisseur than I am. I, I think graphic novels are awesome. They're just, I personally have a little trouble with them because I find it kind of distracting to have to read text and then look at the pictures and then read text and then look at the pictures. I would rather just do one or the other. But I do really appreciate the art. I appreciate the art form. It's just not something I enjoy as much as like a regular novel, I guess. But Adrian loves those. So I think we're both going to read what was included in the Hugo packet and hopefully do that video together. But yeah, let's talk about what I did read this week. Oh my gosh, so many things, just didn't finish any of them. So at the beginning of the week, I was, the audiobook I was listening to is Vita Nostra, and this is part of um, my Translate-a-thon challenge, no, well not my challenge, it's Rea's, is hosting Translate-a-thon where we're supposed to be reading translated books, and this was the second monthly read for speculation, speculation? <laughs> Speculative Fiction in Translation, which is a Goodreads group, which you all should join because it's super fun. The two monthly picks for that group were Amatka and Vita Nostra. So I finished Amatka, I think, last week, and then I had been working on Vita Nostra, and I got, I think, almost halfway, maybe not quite halfway. It is kind of like a longer novel. I was really enjoying it. It's, it's so creepy and mysterious. I love the atmosphere. I love the what the heck is going on aspect of it. Um, I'm not sure if this will be a book that, like, I'm not sure if the book is going to be like, this is so mysterious, and then you get to the end and figure out what's going on, or if it's just a book that focuses on having a creepy, mysterious atmosphere. Either way, I don't care. I think I'm going to love the whole thing no matter what, but I'm very curious to see where this is going, because I'm still like, I don't think I'm even halfway, and a lot has already happened. I don't know. It's I'm definitely super enjoying that. However, because that's an older book, I didn't have to wait when I um, grabbed it from my library. I was able to just get the audiobook for that immediately. There was no wait. So when The Unbroken came from the library, I had been waiting for that for a few months. And when that came, I'm like, well, I need to just put Vita Nostra on hold because I can read that anytime. I need to focus my energy on reading The Unbroken right now because if I don't, I'm going to have to wait like three more months or whatever because it's a brand new novel. Okay, so The Unbroken is also a pretty long book. I, I'm reading the audiobook and when you download that on audio um, Overdrive, audiobooks are always in sections. And just for comparison, I think Amatka had four sections to download. The Unbroken has 17. So it's just going to take me a while to get through this. I got over halfway. I think I'm on section number 9 out of 17. So yeah, I am enjoying this. I've heard very mixed reviews. I've heard, um, for instance, Angela over at Literature Silence Alliance raves about it. Um, some of my other friends have been like, oh, it was, eh, it was okay, but not great. 
but Rue over at Rue's Reading Corner also really loved it. One of my one of my groups on Goodreads read it a month or so ago, and I I didn't have it, so I wasn't able to read it with them because I was still waiting for it from the library. But kind of the tone of the comments from that were very middling, like eh. So I was very like going into this not sure what to think when I had first discovered it for one of my Blackathon challenge videos. I found it really cool. Like I think out of all of the new release or upcoming releases that I had looked at for that video, The Unbroken was kind of the one that I think appealed to me the most. Anyways, I'm over halfway through it and my thoughts. I am enjoying this so far. It is a really long book and I almost feel like it doesn't need to be as long as it is. It feels like it feels stretched out. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure why stuff is happening. I just am not feeling like it's a really tight plot um, or even a really tight character study. Very much focused on the journey of the main character, Terrain. She's a really interesting character and the setting and situation is also really interesting. This is a story that focuses on the effects of empire and colonization and it really does a great job showing the complexity that that is and the complexity of the relationships that you have within a system that is like that and terrain is an interesting character because she was conscripted as a child she was um, a member of a colonized nation who was conscripted by the empire to be a soldier and so she went to wherever the empire is based and was raised to be a soldier and now the story starts when she's going back to where she was born as a soldier for the empire so now there's all of these complicated scenarios where this person who was raised who has no memories of her actual home was raised by the empire and is very loyal to the empire now has to go back and she's suddenly around people that look like her and she has to deal with all of those complicated feelings and situations. And it's just, it, it's so cool how it explores all of that. And I don't see this level of exploration in a lot of other books, but it does remind me a lot of A Memory Called Empire and A Desolation Called Peace by Arkady Martin. Though those books also really explore empire and what it's like to be a colonized person working for an empire. And having complicated feelings about it, having love for the Empire, but also, you know, having an obvious distaste for the Empire and what it has done to you and people that look like you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's all really amazing. I am listening to this as an audiobook and I'm questioning my choice to do that. I mean, I usually go for the audiobook if there's an option between audiobook and eye reading, I'll usually go for audiobook, but in this case, um, I'm not sure it was the right choice because several reasons. So the first reason is I actually love the reader. I think she's doing a great job. Her natural accent seems to be an American accent and she uses her regular accent for all of the non-speaking parts of the book, like when a character isn't speaking. But when a character is speaking, she suddenly reverts to this accent that I think it's a made-up accent I'm not a hundred percent sure it kind of sounds like a muffled French accent um, please forgive me if this is someone's real accent I don't know please tell me <laughs> what I'm missing I find it a little hard to understand and I really wish that she had made a different you know artistic decision I kind of wish she just read the whole book in her natural accent or you know, maybe even if they wanted like an accent, like maybe just hired someone to read it that has an accent like that in real life. I don't know, but it just feels like anytime she starts using this accent, she just starts mumbling a lot and it's a little bit harder to understand. I don't know. I personally don't feel like the use of the accent really does anything to immerse me in the story more, which I don't know. The other reasons I'm, I'm not sure that audiobook was the right choice are just that I'm having some trouble following along. I feel like I'm paying attention, but I will frequently find myself listening to this and be like, oh, Terrain's fighting. How did she get in this fight? I didn't catch the beginning of this. How did, how did she end up in this fight? Or we'll suddenly be in this new scene and I'll be like, wait, 
wait, when did we change scenes? When did we end up in this new location? Or there's also just a lot of minor characters who are named and are speaking and doing things, but I don't know who they are. And I don't know if that's because I'm not paying enough attention. I'm supposed to remember this character from another scene or, or what. So I'm often just a little confused about exactly what's going on in the different scenes. And I don't know if that's just like, I'm not paying good enough attention because usually I am doing other things while I'm listening to my audiobook. But I, I kind of wonder if maybe this just works better. If you're eye reading, you can maybe keep track of these things better. So this is a fantasy story. It's set in a fantasy made up world, but it does seem like the setting is based on French African colonies. It does seem like the empire in this story um, is France or something French. And it does seem like the colonized nations are African countries, African desert countries. So I'm trying to remember my history. I think France colonized Algeria and Senegal. Let me actually, I'm gonna look that Sorry, I had to just look it up because I actually don't know. Um, I know that Africa as a continent was divvied up and colonized by quite a few different European countries. I'm not sure which ones were French specifically, so I'm looking that up right now, I'm Googling it. Apparently French West Africa was a thing, and it was a federation of eight French colonial territories, including Mauritania, Senegal, French Sudan, now Mali, French Guinea, now Guinea, Cote d'Ivoire, Upper Volta, now Burkina Faso, Domi, now Benin, and Niger. Hopefully that's updated. Um, but yeah, so it feels like a French colony in Africa is is kind of the basic setting or inspiration for this story. So in summation, I'm almost I'm over halfway through. I like the idea for this story. I like the setting. I think talking about empire and how complicated that is and the relationship between oppressor and oppressed and how complicated that is and how the oppressed can sometimes be so submerged in the consciousness of the oppressor that they're not even fully aware or thinking about their position as an oppressed person and they can have this loyalty and love for the oppressor um so all of that is like really well done i do kind of just feel like i'm not totally vibing with the pacing of this story and the way that it's being told it feels kind of stretched out it feels a little bit like it's lagging a little bit even though a lot of stuff is happening very excited to see where this ends up going all right i was also reading on my kindle i was reading we are satellites by sarah pinsker this one is really good. It is speculative fiction, speculating about what would the world look like if we had this specific new kind of technology. And it's really well done. It's really well written. We're focusing on a family that is made up of two lesbian women who are married, obviously, and they have two kids. And so we're really kind of watching the impact of this technology through their eyes. And each chapter is from one of their perspectives. And I love the way that this family is portrayed. It's so loving, but complicated. And seeing where they kind of have like these misconnections with each other is endearing and heartbreaking and beautiful. And ultimately they're a really loving, beautiful family. Just the writing is really good. There were times when it, it kind of lagged and I wasn't super interested in continued reading. There's other times when I'm reading and it reads right along. But I would say on the whole, this is character driven and idea driven. And sometimes it just feels like I don't really have a strong need to pick it up because it's not one of those stories that's driven by what's gonna happen, what's going on. There's no like driving question to make me want to devour it basically. But it is good, it is well written. I don't know, I'm just, it's going a little bit slowly for me, honestly, but hopefully I'll finish that this week because I have other Kindle books waiting for me from the library that I need to get to, including Firebreak, which I'm excited to start. Um, I'm also I reading an actual book, Jade City. I am that far. <laughs> um, I am enjoying this so much. It's, it's really good. Um, it's just so good. I think I'm just going to go ahead and just savor it because I'm having a hard time pushing myself through it to kind of read it fast but I'm enjoying reading it slow. So I'm just gonna do that. But yeah, I mean, I'll say the same thing I said last week. I love the world, I love the characters. The vibe of this book is just so strong and fun. Um, yeah, I really like it a lot. Are you reading anything else? Yes, 
Um, in the car, the audiobook that I'm listening to with my husband is A Dead Gen in Cairo by P. Jelly Clark. And we literally have five minutes left of this to read. Um, mm, but, oh well. Um, and I have to say, honestly, uh, we were listening to this on the way to my in-laws this weekend. And I was kind of preoccupied with some other things. And I wasn't paying very good attention. So when we were listening to it on the way home... There was stuff happening. I'm like, wait, I don't remember how we got here. I don't remember what's going on. Um, so I think what I'm probably going to do is just not rate this one. And maybe I'll listen to it again on my own because I feel like I didn't really give it proper attention. But it's really cool. I mean, there are angels and jinn and ghouls and crazy stuff happening. Um, it's definitely super awesome. My husband is loving it. He, th he thinks it's super cool. So we're excited to continue this series. And finally, let's talk about the novelette that I read half of this week, which was When You Linger by Bunny Jo Stufflebeam. This was one that, I don't know, I just kind of forgot to read it, I think. So I started it earlier in the week, and it was, it was just like this list of sexual encounters that this person had had, like all of the people that they had had sex with, and like little descriptions of their relationship. And I mean, that's cool. I mean, they have a very prol prolific sex life, go them. It wasn't like... A good sex life on the whole though so it's kind of like almost depressing to read a little bit and also just kind of repentance like okay this is getting old um but then I was reading it today I was trying to finish it before this video I did not manage to finish it but it does go in it does change gears and it seems like it's more of a eternal sunshine of the spotless mind kind of a scenario I I don't think it's exactly like that but it's a similar idea and I absolutely love that movie so I'm very excited to see where this novella ends up going um I really am still not sure. My cr one criticism of this is that it kind of is hard to keep track of all the characters because there are so many. She's like rehashing all of her romantic relationships and I can't totally keep track of everyone. <laughs> and um, I think it's, it's harder for me to get like really s drawn in because I don't feel like this attachment where I understand everything. But I don't know, I'm excited to see where it's gonna go. Next week, I am going to read Up Sister by Leah Cypress. She has this for free on her website, which I will link below. So please read along with me if you want to. I'll talk about it next week. And I will probably also talk about the rest of When You Linger because hopefully I'll have finished it by then. <laughs> so I started playing Spir Spirit Fairer this weekend on the Switch. And I think I'm still in the tutorial section because so far the gameplay is extremely linear. You don't have choices. There's not really any exploration. But I think that it's very possible that I'm still in the part of the game where it's just like that you need to learn how to do these things. So we're only going to give you one option because you need to learn. Um, but I will update you every week in my journals about like how my game playing is going. And then of course, once I've played all or most of the video games, I will make a video ranking them. But so far, aside from that, you know, complaint, the artwork is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the way the jumping works feels really good. I think I'm going to really enjoy Spirit Fair. Um, yeah. All right. So I think that's everything that I have to talk about this week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.